God's very particular. And when he says to do something, and when he says to do something a certain way, then that, that's how you do it. And there's some things that are accepted of God, and there's some things that aren't. And while, yes, God knows the heart, which is important, he also is particular in what he says to do. And you know what? He wants you just to do what he says. So if he tells you this is the way that the tabernacle is going to be built, then you know what? That's the way it ought to be built. You don't need to add your own flair or do anything different or say, oh, I think this would look better. <laughs> look, just do what God said. And in this instance, God said, hey, speak unto the rock. Now, think about this too. Moses has been using that staff quite a bit for the miracles. I mean, he used that with the parting of the waters. He used that with the rod becoming a serpent. He used that many times turning the water. There's so many times where the staff was being used and even previously with the rock, God had told him to use the staff to, to smite the rock with it. So God had, had told them, because ye believed me not. And we, don't, we can't get into the minds of Moses and Aaron, but we can see through their actions what they had done. And you can see where it could be easy to think more on the staff or the rod having the power than just, well, it's because God said so, he's the one doing it. I mean, just getting to the point of saying, well, hey, do we have to just go and do this for you now? Hold on a second, Moses. You know, like, you're, you're not bringing the water out of the rock, really. Like, I mean, you're doing what God said to do, and you should be speaking what God said to speak. And God's going to be the one providing, and God, it's, it's the water that God is giving to the people to sustain them, not you. Now, you're leading, and it's an important job, and, and you need, you know, God's going to work together with people. But don't get, you know, too ahead of yourself into thinking that, oh, we are doing this, right? So they didn't sanctify the Lord as much as themselves in the eyes of the children of Israel because they're the ones saying, hey, we have to do this. Now, the other thing is that this is immensely significant in the symbolism. And a lot of what happens in the Old Testament and the particularity that God has in the Old Testament, the reason why it's so important is because it's teaching other things. There's a much greater teaching going on. You say, well, why does God care so much? Why is he so particular about, you know, the, the way that the tabernacle is set up? Why? Because there's more to learn about that. If there wasn't, it wouldn't, he wouldn't care to have that part of Scripture. But it is important. And you know, with all of these things, with everything that's in the scripture, it's all important. There's more things to learn. The sacrifices all had a particularity in, the, in how they were to be made. And especially you know, the, the, the Passover lamb. Right? Very particular. I mean, it's gotta be, it's gotta be burnt with fire, roast with fire. You can't have it sodden with water, you can't eat it raw, you know, like he makes all these points saying, look. And why does he do that? Because it's all symbolic. It's all teaching other truths. Those sacrifices are representing Jesus Christ in various ways, depending on his particularity for each one. I mean, even the scapegoat, right? That's going to take away the sins of the people. You're going to let it go. That's what Jesus Christ represents. You know, the scapegoat represents Jesus Christ of taking the sins of the people away. I mean, there's there's so many things. The thing is, when you don't do it right, when you don't do it the way that God said, now you're screwing up the teaching. You're screwing up the picture that God has given and what he's trying to teach. God commanding Moses and Aaron to speak unto the rock, to bring forth that water, is very significant. And we're going to see some in the New Testament. You can turn, if you would, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we're going to go to the book of John. And you probably already know where we're going with this because it's, it's, such a, it's a pretty basic fundamental truth, but it's very important. And especially us as New Testament believers, you know, we see the significance a lot easier because we have the New Testament writings that has shed more light on the things of the past. So in Moses and Aaron's day, they may not have been thinking so much about what God's trying to teach besides just getting the water for the people. But God knows what he's trying to do and what he's trying to teach with the people there. 